probably not too late. It's probably not too late. Oh, but I don't worry about that much. Cause I'm happy. happy as I go along life's journey, I'm reaping better than I've sown. I'm drinking from my saucers, cause my cup has Sometimes the going is rough, but I've got a friend in Jesus, and that makes me rich enough.
Good morning, Indonesia family. My name is John Fass. And my name is Wilhelmina Fass from Oak Dean Cell. We would like to welcome you to today's service, Sunday, 25th April. We wish God's richest blessings on today's service. May we all be inspired by today's message. We thank you. Our call to worship is from 1 John 3, verse 7 and 8. Sorry, 1 John 4, verse 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Come as bid song. Dierbare Heere, terwijl ons nog in die skade weer van die Pase is, alles nog niet en vars, dank ons u vir die kruis dood. Vanochtend dink ons aan die persoonlikhede rondom die kruis, hulle wie ongeërgd was, hulle wie geen kommer uitgespreek het nie, maar ook diegene wie speciaal was vir u as verlosser en Heer, Ons bid is seen ook op elkeen van ons. Vergewe ons as ons ongeërd was, if we were uncaring and unconcerned. But as we are reminded of your love this morning, we confess our sins of indifference. May our fellowship be a meaningful one. As we sum up our prayers, we say together, the Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We've already been welcomed by John. John uh, Verity had a birthday, but she already did a welcome or a reading, and John was gracious enough to be persuaded to say something. John reminded me, and he said, remember, I've got motor neuron disease, and it's affecting my speech now. Uh, John Fuss is such a beautiful gift to us. Um, our readings will be done by um, Amber. Amber is here, as well as Nikke. Nikke, Nikke, Nikki, Nikki. I very seldom use the abbreviation. Nicolene and Amber, both of them, had birthdays today. Today also happens to be Good Shepherd Sunday, um, based on our reading Psalm 23, and we will see, sing one of the renditions of Psalm 23. But allow me to welcome all of you. Byron Boyson's second visit. And I said to Graham, he can visit as much as he like. But JD will not go and visit in Kruifontein. It's, it's better as he may see with the <laughs> But lovely to have you, Byron. And then we've got um, Hendrick's family, neighbors of Zoe and um, Mrs. Ferreira. They're Anglicans, 
and they've got a family worship there and they felt just to break away from that and be with us it's Chandra, Jessica and Matthew and then uh, Mrs. Smith has got a visitor well a new carer and she's Tuli from Kailicha originally from the southern southern Cape um, welcome Tuli um, it's going to be strange it's going to be strange for me to welcome the Ontong family the, uh, Edward is off today. I thought they're going to break away for the long weekend. They had nothing to do and they decided to come and do it here. And next Sunday, Edward preaches at Belleville, Belleville Church. Um, I think you were the subject of a lot of social media this past week. So lovely to have you guys here. It's a long weekend as well. That explains our very, very low numbers. We completely understand, understand that. Um, but those who celebrated birthdays or anniversaries or any other special achievement, please do come forward. We've had a few. Amber? And the show you always show will have is in the week. Wow, I try to say. I buy out of what? A frau, who was your dog? Is a manier. So is it more on gun, weird. At least it's no reader what is it when he first got it, is it? Nee? Say, yeah? Nee, is he for dogs again? What's going to know from your show? But uh, Amber, every blessing on your birthday, Amber had the family over. Nothing beats family, eh? Having family over. Blessings on your birthday. And thank you for reading. I sometimes think kids are young and I ask mom, will Amber read? And she said, sure. So thank you for your reading, Amber. Um, you are one of the very few people that venture out, but just you and your immediate uh, bubble went out. Every blessing to you on your birthday. Um, always special and I know you always make it a family family event blessings on your birthday so will you 33 word I can sicker you was but there show as a little bit of planet you can see your mark a look on you but there no buy a buy a scene for you and Annalie had a birthday as well Annalie you didn't mom didn't come home early for your birthday I thought mom or dad will be half day off but they had to work full days Wishing you well, every blessing. And then Nahum. You may not know it, but Nahum knows all of the dinosaurs by name. He knows all of the dinosaurs by name from a very, very early age. I guess we old people only know a Tyrannosaur Rex and a what not, very few, but he's got a picture and he knows all of them. Wishing you well, Nahum. I don't think you got a dinosaur, did you? Um, but every blessing on your birthday and those who are not with us. Um, am, am, am I making you shy, Nahum? <laughs> Lovely people. Um, let us pray. Lord God, yesterday we had a funeral and in the shadow of death we have celebrations. And so we are reminded of our frailty. And especially in the season of COVID. But we thank you that we can pause for a moment. And give you thanks. Often it is a crisis that forces us to reflect and to be still. But we do so outside of that crisis just to give you thanks in many, many ways. Bless all of our birthday folk, those who are present this morning, but also those who are not. May your love and your blessing continue to surround them. Amen. <laughs>
attempt as, as, attempt as best we can one of the renditions of Psalm 23, the king of love, my shepherd is, and, and do so as you feel comfortable, after which we will have our readings from um, Psalm 23 and Acts chapter 4. hundred and ninety four days in lockdown can you imagine I had the funeral at nine yesterday I was in at seven and then we had viewing and then I said you know a church must be based on relationships we are in relationship with God and with one another and not on meetings Christy we've never had a three-hour meeting Kerkraat of gemeente of enige iets. But that is why the church is referred to as a potential super spreader. Because if you give us half a chance, people lower their defense and resolve and they'll interact and they'll mix. So we need to be con conscious and conscientious about it. We are an Easter people, people of the cross. We profess Jesus as Lord and Savior. At our confirmation service last week, we went. I am Nikki Williams, and I will be reading Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning congregation. I am Amber Fredericks and I will read from Acts chapter 4 verse 5 to 12. The next day the rulers, the elders and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. 
Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we were being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed, Jesus is. The stone you build is rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to Nikki and Amber. Because of lockdown, I try and call people whom I've not seen and without fail, they would say, ons mag nie nie kerk wees, maar ons volg die diens. Um, I didn't realize that since last week we have our official YouTube page, Facebook, Facebook page, so uh, it's easy to follow. Um, and I'm sure Marlon or Farrell will be able to tell us how many people have and are tuned in. I find the different personalities around the cross very in interesting. The Roman guards were indifferent. Soon as Jesus died, they were free to go and do what they could and had to. They just wanted to get the job done. Then there were the uncaring Jews. Jesus made a false accusation, king of the Jews. So as soon as he died, um, he will be buried and then they are free to go. But then also there were those who had a keen interest in Jesus, those who feared his death. And it's quite easy for us to say we were not there. But by association, if we are uncaring and indifferent, inevitably we are siding with the group that is uncaring. Or we could be with the other group that may be very, very indifferent. So it's by association more than by confession that we are there. Where are you? Who can you or do you identify with? Gewoonlik voor het terechtstelling het de mens een kiese om te appelleer. Het is vooral groot in Amerika. Um, voor die persoon terechtgestel word, dan is daar een paar cryptische oomblikke wanneer allemaal, ek weet nie of die rooifoon is hier, die rooifoon doppel, om te kyk of die gouverneer gaan kwijt skelden gee. Maybe Jesus too appealed when he said, if it is your will let the cup pass, but not my will let your will be done. So Jesus was not exempted from death of the cross. And remember, as we've said before, Christ is only risen and alive in us and transforming in us. Christ is, has only resurrected and is risen if he is alive in us. And, and we show forth the gifts of that spirit. I also wonder if there was no compassion around the cross. You may be indifferent. You may be uncaring. But to see a human being suffering on the cross and dying a cruel death. And yet there was nothing, except one of the condemned people on the cross that pleaded for grace and forgiveness. I find that very hard to fathom. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Long after the crucifixion, the teachers of the law and the high priests were out to question and trap the disciples. The stone which the builders had rejected has become the cornerstone. In other words, they had made a mistake. They made a big mistake. But in the bigger scheme of things, that was how it was meant to pan out. Difficult and dangerous as it was, they walked in the spirit of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. This is so deep 
a confirmation and affirmation. And in support of this, John speaks of the Good Shepherd. That is the Gospel of John. And a man's conny, a baie beter for gelijken kreeni. Oh, ek weet ons het ander beskrywings van een skaap wat dom is en so, maar in Bijbelse tyd is een skaap gehoorzaam, eerbiedig. Dat woord nie soos vandag met skaaphonde en aangejaag nie, of motorfietsen nie. But the shepherd walked in front. And we are told by John the shepherd, the sheep knows his voice. And the sheep know that he is there to protect them. En om ook vir hulle na goeie weivelde te lei. Die kudde ken sy stem. Ons het onlangs verneem van die mooie vordering van Edward. En hy het vir allemaal bedankie geschreven. Ons het om geluk gewens. Maar weet, jylle kon evenwel een moeilike draak gemeente wees. There are congregations that are known to chew ministers up and spit them out. Equally, there are leaders who believe their role is about power to lord it over the minister and leadership and maybe a church where the council just runs roughshod over everybody, forgetting completely that we are sheep following a shepherd. And I often say, if you can't honor your minister and if you can't um, um, submit to your minister, how can you submit to Christ? because it's the position and the role. Many of our and other church numbers are dwindling. We've had people that moved and relocated elsewhere, and very soon we will have another family that's relocating for job opportunities to Johannesburg, but we've not really lost members. And I thank, thank God for that. We may get nostalgic when we think about the good old days, and we can talk, be very lyrical about how safe it was in our day and how you didn't have to lock your door and how you could walk and completely be safe. Yet violence and, and, and violence is so endemic in our society that I often wonder what world, what society are we leaving our children? What world, what heritage are we leaving behind? Let me make a few examples. This past week was the 10th anniversary of the death of Moses Tatani, a man that was shot during peaceful protests by police with rubber bullets and died on his way to hospital. Nothing has come of that case. Think of Collins Corsa, um, that died at the beginning during lockdown in his own yard by the SANDF. The last two weeks we had three taxi owners, bosses gunned down. Think of violence in our schools that are out of proportion. We and our family and children live in constant fear. It's unbelievable and we, it's not often relayed or transmitted. I, I discovered just by chance on YouTube that the, 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 ink, the rate of burglaries on, on deliveries has, has taken phenomenal proportions where gunmen, and it's only gunmen would stop with a few cars with automatic rifles, and they will shoot at the delivery vehicle, the very people that come to deliver our parcels, and they empty that van, and they disappear. Nothing comes of it. I know it may sound very um, cynical, but I say to myself, if only minister of police will police, and a minister of transport will transport, and a minister of defense will defend. If only they were to do what they are supposed to do, surely our country would be a better place. But we need people to say, something is wrong, something must stop, we've had enough, this is not right. Maybe only then will it begin to change. I remind you of what Paul said to Timothy in our reflection on Wednesday evening. Continue in what you have learned. This and the knowledge of the Holy Scriptures brings wisdom for salvation. Timothy was taught from a very early age, a sound foundation since infancy. His life was grounded in the faith. He was taught at home. He heard the Christian language and Christian concepts at home, even if it was as simple as um, 
uh, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, Lord, keep us safe this night. Thank you, Father, for our food, but in a small and simplistic way at an early age. We attended, church leaders attended a, a talk on, on, on gangsterism, uh, the S.A. Gestig in Bela, and the church's response. I, I must confess my ignorance. I did not know we've got tens of gangs on average having between seven and 15,000 members armed. 9,000 firearms have disappeared from the police station and they are complicit in the violence. One of our members asked to be transferred from one police station to a different office because for fear of intimidation. That person is aware of what's happening within the police ranks and just did not want to be part of that. Children as young as primary school age have been trained and they are indifferent. The person says, you can in a kind of way see the skill that nothing will register. Absent fathers at home, absent parents. Maybe that is why they call I will be, what the what is foundation phase? So I should be sent in. Foundation phase of school. Grade R to three. Grade R to three. Maybe that's why it's called foundation phase because those gang leaders know if we can grab the, that age group, we've got them for life. That's the phase where we learn values and respect. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness so that every servant is equipped, thoroughly equipped, for every good work. So we may be indifferent or uncaring, and the question remains, were you there? Maybe guilty by association. I'm, I think I'm a romanticist. I live with romantic ideals. If only people were to respect, love, forgive, and, and, and respect, love, and forgive one another, have compassion, and not embezzle, the world will be a better place. So if I were to watch a movie at home and it's got a bad ending, I don't want to watch it. I can read that in the news. And my family keeps on telling me, but that's reality. I don't want to watch violent movies. I don't want to watch these make-believe movies with these funny creatures and, and things. I don't want to be a big one. And sometimes I think, if you look at it, it's really good. Really. If only we were to practice our faith and live out the values of the gospel, then every servant of the Lord will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I don't think you can differ from that. If we practiced our faith and lived out the values of the gospel, and then every servant of the Lord will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And as I said on Wednesday, that's important because today we're about 55, 54 people. Next week with communion, maybe a little bit more. So not everybody is here. So what we take from here, what we get here, we must take and take home. We can't give our children something we don't have. So if we've never prayed, now is the time to learn to pray. If it's always been awkward to take the Bible and read the Bible, now is a good time to try and do so. Day after tomorrow is Freedom Day. This is a good time, and I want to close with that, to reflect on a few of our freedoms. Freedom to love, freedom from fear, freedom from materialism, and freedom from scarcity. Freedom to love. This is how we will know what love is. And John, 1 John 4 verse 7 and 8 says, if only we were to love one another. We're living in a society that has been starved of love in a world of inequality. The trial of George Floyd, the deceased George Floyd, <clears throat> has been transmitted so many times. In this day and age, in the land of the free, a person was knelt on, Nine minutes and nine seconds, and he died. And that was not the only one. There's a South African that was killed in Minnesota by police as well. Um, uh, there is still prejudice. There is still racial division and racial intolerance. 
Now we can say if only we are able to love more, to love our family, to love our partners, our jobs, and even ourselves. What are the factors preventing us from practicing love and being loved? May God grant that we be more passionate about love and life and people. Maybe I, could, I, I should split freedom from fear and intimidation. Fear around us, fear of, 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 um, fear of femicide, fear of um, gender-based violence, fear of the freedom. We need freedom of fear from, from hijacking, from many, many other things. F freedom from fear for our children, for harm that may come to our children. Freedom from fear and intimidation. One cannot speak about freedom to love without also addressing freedom from fear. You know very well the name Levuno Mavunga, 15-year-old girl that committed suicide because she was bullied once too often. I, I find that so difficult to digest. There were more than one video call, video recordings of the bullying. Not one person saying, this must stop, this is not right. Even the teachers knew about the bullying. What was the last thing, what were the last things going through that child's mind? Her mother was ill, suffered a, some illness, she took her mother's tablets, drank the tablets, and she died. And allegedly, or apparently, the person that the bully, that bullied, just posted, oh, sorry, sorry that she died. This is wrong. Wait a minute, this must stop. Only then will it encourage other people to do the same. But we're living in a country, as I said earlier, where violence and even corruption is endemic. I weet sommige van julle, ek gaan die name noem nie, maar sommige van julle kyk religiously die, um, wat is die ding? Zonder commission. I, I can't watch it. I, 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 I've never sat the morning and watched it. Christy, jy watch it nie, ne? Ek weet jy watch it. I would never be able to hear all of these allegations. To a claim was, <coughs> en, en ek het verkeerd gedoen, en ek sê nee, dan sê jy maar, kyk in my oor. I do it with Rocco, our grandchild. Rocco, look into my eyes. So I will need a kick off. I say, how do you know, Boosie? How can you look in my eyes? But this is over. This is what my ma geleerd. How can you deny in public, in full view of the entire country and maybe the world to say you didn't do it? You swore on, a, on oath that you didn't do it. And, and I, all that needs to be done is they must see their faith, that they must see their time in court and be convicted and sentenced. But we also need freedom from materialism. Two weeks ago we read from Acts and we were reminded how the believers sold what they had and they shared equally. It's a different time and a different culture. But, but we've learned never to aspire to live like the Joneses. But nowadays, we are the Joneses. And we are always trying to live a better life. Our life seems to be controlled and conditioned by the things we want and the things we want to buy. We are told that our country, maybe others as well, is in grave danger of living with debt. Is it debt? With debt, with school. People are maxing their credit cards. Not on big things, but on daily um, ordinary run-of-the-mill things. People are increasingly also begging and borrowing and stealing. Two or three at a robot at a time. We know it is tough times. But also it's freedom from scarcity. We may not know what scarcity is. Scarcity means there is not enough for everyone. When I visited Zimbabwe a number of years ago, I saw what scarcity was, but also with the assembly we had. When the banks do not have enough money, when the shops don't have enough groceries, when, when, when petrol is not enough to, to go about and you can't even get your full salary every month, that is scarcity. Yet the political glut continues. 
The same in Nigerian oil-rich country, Africa is a mineral-rich country. Yet we've got the biggest poverty and malnutrition ever can be imagined. On Sunday last week, after worship, after confirmation, I went to give communion. And about after 11, I went home and I, I just saw this smoke in the distance. I thought, there's a Boswat Brandt. And we now know the devastation that followed. And then social media began. People needed food, people needed accommodation, and many of you circulated that message as well and forwarded and forwarded and forwarded even more. But the Western Cape Ecumenical Network, the church leaders, um, especially in the southern suburbs, also responded. And literally within an hour, 600 people could and were accommodated, taken up into church and families and all that. And then the next minute it was said, gift of the givers, a Muslim group, were going to feed 4,000 students, 4,000 people. And literally an hour later, they were asked to do so for seven days. Seven days. And normally they respond within, within minutes. A little karakrat and a streekrat, but will beslate me. They can respond immediately. So mutual, old mutual gave, make, uh, made available their facilities. Pick and pay and hoolies also donated and the corporates donated. And people were asked for donations. Literally within days by Wednesday, word got out enough. Enough food, enough clothes. Everything has been sorted out. I know, that is the point I want to make. I know the church could have done more. But what do we have to do to mobilize support? If it were to be Belleville College or maybe any other disaster around here, how much would it take to mobilize support and money and, and all of that? I'm just asking myself because I know the church could have done more. But because we live with a feeling of scarcity, similar to the scarcity of the Israelites, when they were told in the wilderness, take just enough manna and quail. For today you know what happened when they tried to take for tomorrow and the day after it's spoiled only enough for today we worship a god that blesses us that cares for us that said he would never leave us nor forsake us and you know friends an article published in april 2020 said that in normal life we are busy with our routines and daily activity that we have very little time to stop and think about things, important things in our lives. Real reflection only happens when we are in a crisis. Met andere woorde, nooit leer bid. The article says real reflection only happens when we are in a crisis. We could not wish for a better crisis to force us to think then this time of COVID and uncertainty. They call it a perfect storm, where we reflect not only on our own health, but the quality of our, of our lives and the importance of living and what goes with it. May God give us grace to do that. And now I want to close with a story of a Kenyan runner, Abel Mutai. He participated in Spain a number of years ago it is said, the reporter says, he was literally meters from the finishing line. He became confused with the foreign signage and language and people shouting in Spanish. And then he stopped just before the finishing line. He thought he had completed the race. And then a Spanish runner, Ivan Fernandez, Fernandez was right behind him and he realized what was happening. So he started shouting at the Kenyan. But the Kenyan still didn't understand because he couldn't understand Spanish. So the Spanish man said, continue running. And then uh, Ivan Fernandez um, pushed him, encouraged him to go behind him so that he could finish and eventually finished. A journalist then asked, why did you do that? Ivan replied, my dream is that someday we can have a kind of community life where we push and help one another to win. The journalist said, but why did you let that Kenyan win? You could have bypassed him. Ivan said, I didn't let him win. He was going to win. In fact, he had already really finished his race. 
The race was his, the journalist says, but why did you? You could have won. And the, the, Ivan looked at him and he said, what would have been the merit of my victory? What would have been the honor in that medal? What would my mother think of me when I brought that medal home? Values are passed on from generation to generation. What Christian values are there that we can and must and will pass on to our children? Let us begin by passing on the beauty of humanity, honesty, and love for God. Let us pray. Lord God, you created this world perfect in every aspect. You have created us, the ultimate human beings, created in your image. But no sooner were we left to fend for ourselves with a mind and independence that we realized we can create. And even with that creation and the gift of creating, we also realized all of the other things we are capable of. Capable of jealousy, competing, comparing, and wanting. Yet we live in a world of abundance. But we still exist with a mind of scarcity. We encourage to give that our joy may be full. Forgive us for soiling this creation that you have given us. Pollution fills our oceans, our fields. Pollution has invaded our own minds and lives and homes. Materialism clouds our thinking. We no longer know the difference between needs and wants. As we come to worship you on a Sunday, remind us, Lord, of our high calling as Christians. In whatever church we worship, called by whatever name. Give us courage to say, this must stop. Enough is enough. This cannot continue. We're living in a world where people with the wrong intentions become role models. Give us courage, even in this year before the elections, to say, this must stop. This cannot continue. Bless us as a congregation and as families as we continue to create in our homes an atmosphere of praise and honesty and worship. Amen. <clears throat> let, us <clears throat> let us honor God with our gifts. Penny, have you assigned people? Amber, would you and not Amber, Ashley, would you and Alex please just assist with that? Alex waits, Amber, um, Alec, uh, Ashley. Thank you.
God thanks for these gifts. As we are reminded, we were informed on Thursday at the talk that churches are increasingly also targeted by armed robbers. So we're just aware of the pre how precarious we are and Bufadbarons is vanna ons by makarkum. Let us give God thanks. Lord, even though we live in a society that talks about scarcity, we give from our abundance. The abundance of gift and love and gifts that we have and in many other ways that we are blessed. So we ask for your blessing on these gifts now and always. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit remain with you and abide with you always. Amen.